Good morning, guys. It is 6.36 a.m. Eastern Time, September 2nd, 2017. All right, so we've had a little bit of quiet here on this map for about 24 hours, which was something actually amazing to see. It's been well over a month since we haven't had any, dis any disturbances on this map. But guys, just as we thought, we're getting into the first week of September, and we have yet another disturbance going on. There is no reading for the next 48 hours, and we were going to talk about why, but 20% over 5 days. And now the timing with this lines up perfectly. I want to show you guys something that we worked on about two videos ago, and that is the shear winds that are basically not allowing storms to form in the Gulf or the Caribbean right now. And that's why we lost those potential storms that were going to be possibly Nate, which was right here, that disturbance. And then there was another disturbance by uh, Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico that could have possibly been Ophelia. And we talked uh, in depth about these shear winds that did not allow that to happen. And we're going to show you why once again. And we're also going to use this to show why it's now allowing storms to form. And this is why Florida is at big risk, guys. The entire Gulf is at risk now because we are now seven days out and they're still showing that major hurricane right here, possibly in that pocket of the Panhandle and the west coast of Florida. Again, it may change, but we still need to look at it. We need to uh, let our friends know about it. Here is Tuesday the 3rd, guys. Now you can see this shear wind here is a little bit weaker than it was a couple days ago. It was more like this color. You can see this far up in the air, we're at like 45,000 feet. These are constant air currents that go on, and these steer our storms at ground level. These have a big influence on the storms. They uh, decide whether these storms live or die before they even form into tropical depressions. If you can see here, 142 miles an hour, constant speed up this high. So airplanes have to adjust to this. High altitude airplanes, some of our commercial jets, they have to adjust to these winds. These winds are very strong, and they control storms, guys. And we could see it right down here. We have a minor shear wind here, about a 70 mile an hour top shear wind coming over the top of Florida. And this is what was not allowing Nate or Ophelia, if they were named, to form. As we move forward to Wednesday the 4th, you can see that more of a, a vertical deal, at least according to what we're, how we're looking at the map or orientation. It looks like these shear winds are coming from North Florida straight down into the Caribbean and the Gulf. Again, not allowing those storms to form. That's why that percentage went down so quickly from about 50% with Nate to zero, basically in a 24-hour period, these shear winds peeled off the jet stream area and started their own like little vortex here, a big vortex covering most of Mexico. You could see it here, and it didn't allow those storms to form. Now we're going to explain why the storm that we were just looking at on here is projected to form, and that is for a few reasons. So by now we are at Thursday the 5th. You could see this uh, north to south wind is beginning to shift this way and then a separate one breaks off and then begins to reform to the jet stream here uh, right at La Habana it looks like in Cuba and now we move to Friday the 6th it's bending a little more Saturday the 7th we have a little bit of a break you can see the shear wind event is not that strong here anymore and then by the 8th on Sunday guys this is when the models are literally showing this storm forming and being right in this area and you can see it's a direct relation to these shear winds not being here anymore. Even as, as far as Thursday the 5th, look how drastic this shear wind is, nothing forming here. And then we skip to the 8th, which is three days later, no shear winds whatsoever. So what happened was, is the, the projected shear wind timetable actually dropped and it left. It's, it's projected to leave a lot sooner and that opens this area up for potential storms. And now that we have that, that information, we can go to these charts and figure out why they are all saying in the next five days there's possibility of storm formation. And that's because those shear winds have lifted up, guys. We're going to take a look at this. Here is the European model. Their projection for this. We're going to start from the beginning. There's Maria and Lee once again. As we move forward, you can see by the 9th, which is two days after that shear wind event lifts up, we have a system right here, possibly that comes out of, it actually comes out of the Pacific Ocean, crosses the land, and then makes its way up into this area. This is where most storms form, guys, this time of year in October. This is the warmest water here, so this is why we're seeing this. And then as far as the Europeans go, by the 10th, this is their system here. They project it to be right here by the 9th, and that's when those shear winds are gone. 
That's the European version. We'll check out GFS in a second. Here are the Canadian models, guys, and this is the one I wanted to show you because Canadian models are very good at projecting the formation of storms, but they're very bad at where the, the storms go. But again, because we're forming here in the Gulf and the Caribbean, these storms don't have many places to go once they form. But again, the point here is that by the 7th, that shear wind event is gone, and we already have one, two, three systems going on. One probably staying on the west side of Mexico, maybe affecting the west side of the U.S. Highly doubtful, but we need to watch it. But this is the guy right here we want to watch. And as we move forward, you can see it goes over the east side of Cuba by the 8th. Here's the ninth. No shear winds here whatsoever, allowing this storm that almost looked like the storm we were waiting for to be Nate, but the shear winds wouldn't allow it to grow. Now that those shear winds are gone by the ninth, we just showed you on Ventu Sky. Look at this monster right here. And it goes right up into the panhandle and then almost hooks a little bit of a right across Florida and then affecting South Georgia, all while a storm is out here, guys. And remember, if two storms are within 900 miles of each other, they can begin to interact in a Fujiwara effect. And that's when they spin around, um, possibly putting one closer to the coast, maybe helping us out and pulling it out into the ocean. Again, guys, these are all possibilities now that those shear winds are over, and there's nothing to stop these storms from forming. And I want you to notice where this big storm here formed and that's off the west coast of Africa and that's an area I've been specifically telling you guys to watch uh, because it's not over from this area it's very it's very active there's a lots of storms coming off of Africa right now there's a lot of fires brewing here that fire and smoke actually affects storm clouds it may add energy to them or potential for bigger storms so it's just something to look out for and then once they get on this western belt um, all bets are off, guys. This is warm water. It's at least 80 degrees. That's what you need for hurricane formation. We have uh, more than 80 degrees going on in the Gulf right now. Here's a water temperature chart. 85 here. 86. This is exactly where that storm is said to form. So that's another direct relation, guys. This warm water is what causes these storms. And then once it forms, no shear winds. This is all just fuel. Think of this as a big sea of gas for your car. So guys, I mean, this is just, we, we need to keep people aware, especially all the Gulf states. This is very important. We're talking only six days out right now. We're not doing a, a 12 and 13 day forecast right here. This is six days, so they're fairly confident about this. Again, the Canadian models, they're very good at these storms forming. They're good at predicting where the storms form, but after that, it's not really that good. They're not good with the path, but again, we don't have many areas to go once these form. This area right here, as we showed, is the warmest water we have right now in this area. That's exactly where the storm's forming. So we may be looking, once again, at Nate and Ophelia, and this system right here may be Felipe. We just don't know. It depends on which one is a tropical storm first, and then we have to go from there. So, uh, last thing here I want to show you. Once again, when you guys are looking at these maps right here, you want to look for the thickness. This is a visible map, so if you see that line moving across the screen, it's changing from visible to infrared. The visible uses uh, actual sunlight to reflect off the clouds and show you images, and then the infrared is obviously infrared. But again, this is the area to watch for those of you that will be watching throughout the day. Right here are where those big storms are forming. We're beginning to get our counterclockwise rotation just as this shear wind event is lifting off of Florida, pulling weather in from the east towards the west today. So again, people on the east coast of Florida, you're going to be getting wind coming in from the ocean and blowing in towards you at least for about 20 hours, 24 hour, or uh, 48 hours, 24 to 48 hours is what I'm trying to say. Not enough coffee yet. Anyway, this is the area right here, guys. It's going to begin the counterclockwise rotation. And don't be surprised if you see this percentage go up even throughout the day today. And once again, the reason there's no percentage over 48 hours is because those shear winds will not be gone by then. But they are very confident once those shear winds lift up, this thing's going to blow up in percentages and we may have our next tropical storm and our next major hurricane, guys. Those are just the, the facts of it right now. Really quick, the Eastern Pacific, this is projected to be a hurricane, 70% uh, chance over five days. Again, this area is being influenced by those shear winds as well. We could see how far they dip down. They are beginning to lift north, and just as it's doing it, 
Five days, 70% chance of formation, guys. This could be a big Cat 4 or Cat 5 storm out here, so we will watch it. We're watching the Gulf, we're watching the Caribbean, and that'll be it for now, guys. Thank you so much for joining me this morning. We will be back this afternoon. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.